Good evening and thanks for joining us. For decades, thousands of people have made the trip to the Heimer's Fair to take in all it has to offer. Whether it's the entertainment, food, or the various booths set up with crafts for sale, there's just, some just, there's just about something for everyone. Courtney Rutherford reports. Um, I already ate a, like, a hot dog from there and some french fries, but the hot dog was great, so maybe some more hot dogs. Eight-year-old James Pella isn't shy when it comes to saying his favorite thing about the Heimer's Fair. He, along with his family, have been coming for years, and it's something he's looked forward to for a while. Once I'm done doing this, we're gonna go, we're gonna head over, and um, the fire, fighter guys are gonna light a fire, and we're gonna, and we're gonna put it out. So it's gonna be really cool. The Heimer's Fair first began in 1912. Since then, the fairgrounds expanded and various buildings were added. However, the country spirit still remains. The fair is a chance to encourage agricultural awareness and to provide opportunity for people in the surrounding area. Close to 12,000 people are expected to come through the gates over the two days. And President of the Heimer's Fair, Angela Woodhouse Wild, says there is always one thing that keeps people coming back each year. I think because we're a very agricultural fair, we don't have a midway, we don't have a beer garden, and we keep it that way on purpose. We make it very family friendly, but we also try to really focus on the agricultural. And I think that's what keeps our essential core really special, plus fabulous volunteers. Take me home, there's a variety of contests and entertainment like the Light Horse Show and daily performances on the main stage. Each year, Woodhouse Wild makes some changes to the roster and the fair continues to grow each year. Last year we had a roof put over our hilltop stage, so that's almost new for this year. We have a super terrific hunter-jumper horse show. And tomorrow in the Heavy Horse Show, we also have an hour of dogs doing doggy demonstrations of skill and agility. So we've got some very fun stuff happening. The fair will be running Monday from 9 a.m. until just after 5 p.m. Courtney Rutherford, TBT News. Well, it's the beginning of September, and that means several activities that take place outdoors will be shutting their gates for the season. All public pools across the city will be closing down until next summer. That includes the Art Widnell Pool, D Street Pool, and Heath Park Pool. Despite the cooler temperatures, there were a number of kids taking a final dip today before hitting the books tomorrow morning. Those we spoke with say the recent warm weather has allowed them to take advantage of the pools. Well, the best part is um, swimming with our water balloons. And um, I like coming here because just it's fun because jumping off the diving board and sliding down the slide, it's pretty fun. Um, I think it's everyone's re like really friendly here, especially all the lifeguards. Like they're all like really sweet, really nice, and getting to know everybody is definitely very fun. I just live over there, and I came here. Um, I'm not pretty sure. I came here like mostly every day. All three pools will be up and running for the summer season in 2014. A well, 34-year-old woman has been arrested after a man was stabbed Saturday evening. Thunder Bay police were called to the Wentworth Crescent home around 7 o'clock following reports that a man had been stabbed. The victim had a cut to his leg and required surgery. The suspect was charged with assault with a weapon. She'll have a court date later this week. Police have confirmed this incident is not related to a separate incident which occurred on Wentworth Friday night. OPP say a man from Ear Falls is dead following an ATV mishap near Marathon yesterday. 63-year-old James Buckner was killed after the ATV he was driving plunged down a steep embankment. Buckner was ejected from the machine and wasn't wearing a helmet at the time of the incident. He sustained fatal injuries as a result. Buckner was working for Stillwater Canada Incorporated on their property about five kilometers northeast of Highway 17 in Peninsula Road in Marathon. The Ministry of Labour has been called in to investigate the work-related death. A post-mortem is scheduled to determine the exact cause of death. Well, the township of Terrace Bay was put under a boil water advisory following a powerful storm last weekend. A backup generator at the water treatment plant failed to do its job. The advisory was put in place last Saturday morning. It caused some frustration for both town officials and residents. The backup generator at the plant did in fact come online, but it was unable to keep the facility running, causing a loss of pressure in the system. 
Water samples were sent to the Thunder Bay District Health Unit for analysis, and the advisory was eventually lifted Tuesday morning. The event brings to light issues that have occurred in recent weeks. It, we had some uh, issues a couple weeks ago, actually, during uh, Drag Fest weekend. Um, it wasn't related to, to the same issue. It was a completely different issue. Uh, we fixed that problem. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's been, there's been little issues here and there that uh, shouldn't be happening. Our water treatment plant is fairly new, uh, probably one of the newest one on the North Shore, so it's state-of-the-art. Uh, so it's, it's been a frustrating process for us, and we're hoping to fix all these little issues moving forward. An economic downturn in Marathon four years ago led to Town Council getting rid of ice time rentals at the local rink during summer months. The idea was brought back again for reconsideration this summer, and although town officials had their concerns, the response from the community has been overwhelming. Jordan Mulaney has the story. It certainly looks and feels like summer on the outside, but inside the Marathon Arena, the winter activities are in full swing. The Zamboni has been putting in overtime since early August, giving numerous user groups summertime ice. Parks and Recreation Manager Joe Jazvac says it's amazing how the town and surrounding area has responded. We went to council uh, with, a, with a requirement to have 136 hours of ice booked and committed to before ice was approved. We went to them on June 24th with 172 hours and numerous donations. Summer ice got approved and we're sitting here in August with 242 hours of summer ice. And lots of big the return of the winter activity has allowed user groups such as the local figure skating club to begin early as well as local three-on-three -three hockey. The minor hockey league also has plans to take advantage by extending their season. Kids from the area recently got some extra training when former NHL pros Chris Simon and Terry Cittaroni from Superior Hockey School held a two-week-long program. Most of the age categories were filled and that's uh, with a very short lead-up. Summer ice was approved June 24th and they pulled it all together in, in very quick fashion and, and ran a very, very successful school. People are talking about next year, it's looking like a really, really good program. And that's just the beginning um, with the tournaments we have on the weekends. Um, three on three for kids, three on three for adults. Our tri-sport is back with ice, uh, a great story for Marathon. Jazvac says with having the only summer ice from Thunder Bay to Sault Ste. Marie, groups from around the region have been lacing up. Kimberly Moses, the new head figure skating coach, says having the extra time to work with her students has given them the chance to enhance their training. It's great for them to keep them occupied in the summer because what else are they going to do if they're sitting around at home? So it actually keeps them really active and actually we had um, off ice with our summer program so we had them doing some dryland training and proper body alignment so it's definitely helped them out a lot that way too. Marathon Mayor Rick Dumas says they can definitely see the room for growth within the Summer Ice program and any revenues generated by this year's service will go towards bringing it back for next year. Jordan Milani, TBT News. The Marathon Tourist Centre and former Ski Hill will be welcoming a new tenant in the coming months. Ontario's first local forage management corporation will soon be opening its offices in the facility. The NFMC will administer and oversee the sale of timber along the northeast shore of Lake Superior. The town of Marathon was recently approved as a successful bid to host its main office. Marathon Mayor Rick Dumas hopes to see staff moving into the municipally owned building by early October. He says the two sides are currently working to develop needs and assessments for the amount of space the organization will need. By the sounds of the discussion we've had preliminary with them, we can set them up in the lower portion of the facility and continue to use as a dual purpose facility the tourist information during the summer months and maybe other opportunities during the winter. So we can it can be a well-rounded used uh, facility right now. It's only being used as tourist information center in the summer because as you know, with the mill going down, we had to close our, our ski hill because it was a huge economic cost to the municipality and very low usage because the demographics were changing. Dumas says the date for applications has closed for the forest management manager position. He expects the new hire to be announced in the coming weeks. Well, if you play video games, there may have been a time when you wondered if the features performed by some of the players could actually be done. One local teacher explores that possibility in his second published book about gaming. Daniel Lawden has released his latest book, Physics of Video Games Part 2, The Lost Levels. He explores brand new video games and applies some physics to see if they can be recreated outside of the TV screen. The video game he's chosen to analyze represents decades of gaming. Lawden says his goal by creating the book was to get kids more interested in physics. Just from people around the world, especially in the UK, oddly enough, where people were saying that they were reading to their kids at night, reading these books, and they were saying that I was doing poorly in physics, but now I've actually understood some of these things. I've gained more interest, or I have people who graduated from school saying that we now 
really enjoy physics and we want to learn more. And it's just been absolutely great. The book is available right now. It costs twenty or it costs twelve ninety nine on Amazon or at Create Space. Well, the Chippewa Zoo has been making negative headlines lately with the recent death of the park's moose. Mayor Keith Hobbs says he thinks it's time to shut down the wildlife exhibit. Not everyone agrees with that assessment. Some council members feel there's value in retaining the wildlife exhibit. So for our question of the day, we wanted to know if you were in favor of keeping the park open or closing it down. I think it's part of an integral part of Thunder Bay. I think the more we can get people back to nature, I think the, the better it is. Let the children uh, see what goes on in wildlife and put as, uh, get as much wildlife in there as we possibly can. I always enjoyed it when I was a kid, and I think he'd enjoy it, and he already has. So I, I, I don't know. I just don't see the, the point in turn, shutting it down. It also helps wildlife recover and things like that. You know, I, the moose probably died because he was old. Um, maybe some improvements could be made, but I don't think it should be shut down altogether. I think that Chippewa exhibit is really good for kids to go there and see. My kids love the animals. It's a draw for me because it's, un it's unfair for the animals. They're in a sanctuary that's not well ma maintained. There's no room really for them to roam. So for the animals, I would be in favor of it. But for the children and whatnot that go through it and see that, I'm not in favor.